Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, Eid Mubarak. As a new river to Islam, this is my very first Eid Ul Adha. And to be completely honest with you guys, for the past years, I read the Quran, I read the Hadiths. However, when it comes down to holidays, I still know very, very little. So therefore, today, we're gonna react to the video, what is Eid Ul Adha and why do Muslims sacrifice? By the channel, one Islam productions. I'm going to use this video to learn something but moreover I'm going to use it as well so we can celebrate digitally together because as a new revert nobody in my family is a Muslim and therefore the holiday season is always the loneliest for reverts. I'm going to celebrate alone. So guys do me the favor before we start the video if you enjoy the content leave me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and check out our merch in the description box. With no further ado let's have a look. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon you all, my beloved brothers and sisters in humanity and in faith as well. Muslims generally have two major occasions of happiness and joy, the days known as the days of Eid. They always come after dedicated worship, after a huge sacrifice, after having done something major for the Almighty. For example, the first Eid, known as Eid al-Fitr, is at the end of the ninth month of the lunar calendar that the Muslims actually follow. And that is the month of Ramadan, wherein which we fast. To me, this feels absolutely like yesterday. I reverted to Islam and two days later, Ramadan started. It was the first Ramadan for me and the first Ramadan as a Muslim. What better way to revert to Islam than starting right away with Ramadan? I absolutely loved the fasting period. We stay away from things that are otherwise permissible normal water and normal general food that we would eat on any day and even relations yes. with our spouses. So we stay away from that during the daylight hours only for an entire month. The idea is to achieve closeness to the Almighty, to discipline yourself. Islam is all about discipline. You need to be able to uh, uh, obey instructions and listen to that which is beneficial to you. And this is one of the reasons why I accepted Islam. Of course, first and foremost, Allah guides who he wills. Therefore, it is up to Allah to decide who will become a Muslim. But nevertheless, discipline was such a huge part. Because when I was 12 years old, I was a chubby little kid. This is the day I started to diet. With 12 years old, I started intermittent fasting. After 8 p.m., I wouldn't eat anymore. And like this, I lost a lot of weight. With 16 then, I decided to become a bodybuilder. I followed a strict regimen in training, in nutrition. I never had a cheat meal. I was eating only rice, chicken, oatmeal and protein powder for three years straight. No matter what the occasion was, family celebrations, holidays, I would take my tupper box and eat my food. Discipline transformed my body. From a 60 kilo light teenager, I became a 150 kilogram bodybuilder. So very early in my life I realized that without discipline we are completely lost. Without guidance, without a plan, we don't know where we are going. It is like the example of the ship that sails into the ocean but without a plan. Where are you going? Wherever the wind takes you, this is not a productive life and won't lead to the desired outcome. Only discipline, self-imposed discipline will lead to success. Anything that is worthwhile in this life needs discipline. You need discipline for a business. You need discipline for sport, as I said. You need discipline for a relationship, man. When you're young, it's all easy, all fun and games. You meet somebody and everything is peachy. However, when you enter marriage, you need discipline. You need a structure for your marriage to keep it successful. And of course, the same applies even more so to spiritual matters. We are absolutely lost without a plan coming from the divine, without a plan from God that we follow. Because if we do not follow God's plan, we are following our own desires. That is the whole essence of the dilemma that we have as human beings. And this is why you see society crumbling. Most religions don't have that discipline. They are not applying any rigid structure. And when they're looking at Islam, they're even blaming Islam. Oh, Islam is so rigid. You have to pray five times per day. Yeah, boo-hoo. I had to train five times per week as well. Only discipline will lead you to success. After dedicating your month to acts of worship and 
benefiting yourself as well through uh, perhaps improving your health through the fasting absolutely disciplining yourself for the almighty yes and enjoying the beautiful month of ramadan the almighty gives us a day known as the day of eid ul fitr depicting the end of the fasting season and that is a beautiful day deserved well deserved after a month of goodness now in a similar way for me personally the last day of ramadan was actually a bit sad because i enjoyed the fasting so much it was a spiritual journey the hero's journey here in thailand man it was so extremely hot we are totally dehydrated just driving with our scooters to the mosque but i loved that suffering i loved that discipline as i said i come from a bodybuilding background i was so fascinated with the month of ramadan i appreciated the discipline and then when it came to an end i was actually sad the lunar calendar which is known as the month of dhul Hijja. That's the 12th month of the lunar calendar. In that month, from the beginning of the month right up to the 9th, the 10th days, we are trained to actually engage in extra acts of worship. The Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, has said that there are no days wherein which the Almighty loves acts of worship more than the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, which is the 12th month of the lunar calendar. Now, I've Ramadan, this, we know, was all about fasting. Sure. What about the Hajj? The Hajj is all about the Prophet Abraham and his sacrifice. So he sacrificed his son. According to the Muslim scriptures, that son was Ismail. According to the Jewish and the Christian scriptures, that son was Ishaq or Isaac. May peace be upon them all. Nonetheless, this son who was sacrificed, what was the reason behind that sacrifice? The Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him, was very close to the Almighty. He was the father of all the prophets who came after him, according to Islamic belief. And I have to interrupt it again because you have to ask yourself the question, which other religion that proclaims to be an Abrahamic faith actually has a holiday dedicated to Abraham? He was revered, he was respected, he was Zero. Khalilullah, meaning a friend of the Almighty. Right. And he had built what we know as the Kaaba in Mecca, a house of worship wherein which people would gather and worship the Almighty alone, their maker and no one else. So when that happened, at a certain point, he saw a dream. And in that dream, he was instructed by the Almighty to sacrifice his son, perhaps according to Muslim scriptures, in order to serve as a lesson for all of us that the Almighty actually should come before everything and anything everything. else. Everything. Obedience everything. to the Almighty God is always first. first. So when you get too attached to something, it becomes unhealthy. If yes. you're too attached to your son or your daughter or your spouse or anything material, there is a point beyond which it becomes unhealthy because if you were to lose them to the Almighty's destiny through death or something bad were to happen, you would not be able to survive the loss. So we're not allowed to... Yeah, moreover, you wouldn't only not be able to survive the loss, but you would lose faith in God. This is what we see with all so many atheists. They always tell you... Oh, God is so evil. If there is a God, why does he kill children? That is the definition of worshipping the creator, not the creation. We are just creation. Yes, as harsh as that sounds. Our children, our family, our wives, we are all just creation. And every single time we put the emphasis onto creation, we lose track of God. We lose sight of what is really important. If you look at Prophet Muhammad's life, may peace be upon him, you see as well that all so many children of his died during his lifetime. Was he being punished by God? Of course not. There is a greater wisdom and it forces us to redirect our focus away from the creation onto the creator. To harm anyone. Obviously that instruction was something divine for a purpose. Yes. But even the fulfillment of it was not exactly as it was instructed. It was a test. I'll explain in a moment how it happened. Going back to the lesson that we learned from it, when you get too attached to something material, for example, say your car or your phone or something in your house, your clothing, the day the clothing is burnt with the iron, the day the car is damaged, the day your product is broken, you may become so angry and vexed that you might lose control, you might harm people, you might do something silly, you might harm yourself, depending on what exactly you've lost. So the Almighty is telling us, listen, I come before everything else. Destiny is chosen by me. 
prescribed exactly. by me. Yes, you have a role to play and I've given you a choice. And the only thing you're going to be questioned about on the day of judgment is how you utilize the choice that I actually gave you. If I did not give you a choice uh, about something, I'll never ask you about it because it's not fair. So the prophet Abraham was instructed to sacrifice his son. He told his son, according to the Quranic scripture, obviously I'm speaking about the Muslim narrative. Of course. He told his son, oh my son, I've been instructed through a dream to actually sacrifice you. What do I do? <laughs> Imagine that, man. Do as you're told. Because the Almighty will never let us down. And so he then was uh, known. It's known that he took his son and he was about to enact what the Almighty had instructed him when the Almighty replaced that son with a ram from heaven. Right? And that depicted the ultimate submission to the Almighty. <clears throat> exactly right. Which means you've understood that everything comes from the... I don't want to pull a Jordan Peterson here, but yes, metaphorically speaking, this displays the pure submission to God, the pure submission to Allah, because yet again, it shows you that you're not worshipping anything in creation over the Creator. You would even give your firstborn son. There is literally nothing more important to a man than his firstborn son. If you can sacrifice him, kill your own son for God, what displays more submission? Almighty, everything belongs Nothing, to the obviously. Almighty. Don't everything. so attached. Obviously, we're all naturally attached, but sure. there is a level beyond which it becomes toxic and it even becomes dangerous for us. So the Almighty is the owner. He gave it to you in the first place and he is going to take it back at some point. Now, that sacrifice, when it was replaced with a ram, the Almighty loved it so much that he asked us all to reenact that more for the lesson than anything else. So the Almighty says, look, the meat right. or the blood is not going to get to the Almighty. No. According to the That's why I love Islam. In the Arabic language. It is the piety and the God consciousness that is of essence not uh, the meat and the blood etc again this is really why i love islam so much because it's practical it's rational it's logical it is true yes this is not about sacrificing blood and giving it to the gods like the mayans or the aztecs did back in the day or even the jews back in the day no it is metaphorically speaking it is about the lesson it is about the piety it is not about the material flesh ascending to the heavens of the makes perfect sense or the sacrificial animal perfect sense so in the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, There are no days wherein which acts of worship are more loved by the Almighty than the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. When it came to Ramadan, the nights were more sacred, indeed. And we were taught that the nights of Ramadan are so loved by Allah when you worship the Almighty in those days, or in those nights, sorry. And during the day, you're actually fasting. So when it comes to Dhul Hijjah, it's the day that's of essence. And the night, yes, you spend in the worship of the Almighty as well. Muslims pray five times a day. Two of those prayers are at night. One of them is just after sunset. One is slightly later and one is before the sun rises. So actually three of them are after sunset. Two of them are at night and two of them are during the day. That makes five. Those are short prayers that don't last more than a few minutes, but it's just to be able to turn to the Almighty, remind yourself, I came from there, I'm going to go back there. The one who made me is going to have mercy on me and he is the only one I worship. And I call him Allah, which means the worshiped one. Powerful. Eloha or Elohim in the Hebrew language. Powerful. Now, the prophet Abraham and his sacrifice, his life is celebrated by the Muslims in a great way. His son Ismail, his son Isaac or Ishaq, may peace be upon them all, his wives and everything that he did, the dedication is studied by the Muslims just like it's studied by others. But we reenact this, we worship the Almighty for these nine whole days and on the tenth day we're given an Eid known as Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Adha actually lasts for three days. So that Eid, where, we're in which we're meant to reach out to the poor again with meat, with food stuff, with something to eat, with something to celebrate with. Vegans hate this holiday. Reaching out to the poor. And that's why the Almighty says, divide your sacrifice into three. A third you can eat from. A third give your family and friends. And a third dedicate it to the poor. That's an amazing Islamic teaching.
Mashallah. Even your wealth, it would be brilliant if you could divide it into three. Yes. It's not compulsory regarding your general wealth because there is a bare minimum that you have to give known as the charity, the zakat. So charity in the English language has the understanding that it's totally voluntary. No other religion has this. Yet again, people will claim that Islam is all so evil, all so bad. No other religion has compulsory charity. When it comes to the None. zakat that the Muslims give, it's not voluntary, but it's a type of charity that's actually compulsory. You must nice. give two and a half percent. Amazing. So when it comes to the sacrificial animal, we give and we reach out to the poor. The idea is to be able to become a better person. With all of these teachings, the idea is to improve on two things. Every time Islam has taught us something, the idea is to improve on two things. One is your relationship with the one who made you. First and foremost. two is your relationship with everything else that he has made. Beautiful. As simple as that. Now, you have people from different understandings at times, a minority who misinterpret things and they they are cruel towards those who perhaps belong to other faiths, maybe other races, maybe other nationalities. This is not only within the Muslims, but sure. a lot of people have this misunderstanding. We are actually brothers and sisters because we come from Adam and Eve. And even though we may not share the same faith, notice at the beginning I said my- The older I get, the more I realize that it's all about good and evil. You have good and evil people everywhere. That being said, of course, as a Muslim, I believe that Islam is the absolute truth. But nevertheless, that doesn't put me in a position to hate on other people. And this is what you see, unfortunately, in every faith, be it Christianity, be it Judaism, but even within the Muslims. You have people that are filled with hatred and they cannot wait to use any pre tends to let that hatred out and then they're going to use and abuse the religion just to vomit their hatred and frustration onto the world and sisters in humanity at least it's a battle between faith, good and evil after all some of you might be my brothers and sisters in faith too but if you're not no big deal you're still my brothers and sisters in humanity the minimum i Solid. afford you is the respect of a human being of an extended family of mine Beautiful. Even if I disagree with you. And that's something that we're taught as Muslims. And this is where when the sacrifice comes in, we as Muslims, we do have a little bit of difference of opinion regarding certain details. You know, how old should the animal be? Uh, exactly what time should it happen? And so on. Is there a leeway? Is there no leeway? Uh, but that does not remove us from being connected in the same way. When you don't belong to my faith, it doesn't remove us from being connected through humanity. And we should discuss our faiths. I mean, today I'm speaking to you. Tomorrow you can speak to me. Tell me what you believe, what you think. We should be free to do this in a very respectful way. No attacking people, no abusing them, no swearing them. Just present your opinion. Yes. You may want to express why you feel someone else is wrong, but in a beautiful way, just to get them to understand and then to make their minds up as to what exactly they want to do. Now, this is something that is lacking Present the in evidence. today's world. Or should I say, it needs to be encouraged more. And I pray that this uh, beautiful occasion of the Eid al-Adha, the Eid of the sacrifice, is actually going to be uh, a time of reflection, a time of sacrifice, dedication, a time of worship, a time of reaching out to the poor, and a time of building the bond with both the uh, departments that we're supposed to be building the bonds with. Number one, my relationship with my maker. Number two, my relationship with the rest of the creatures of the same maker. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Beautiful, Isad. We've man. benefited. Jazakumullah khair. May the Almighty recompense you with beautiful goodness. Ameen. Ameen. All right, this is it for today's video. I personally, as a new Muslim, learned a lot here. I know for born Muslims, this probably was boring. They already know this. Nevertheless, I believe that this was very, very beautifully said. And I am aware that some people do not appreciate this compassionate way of speaking. Again, I want to make one thing very, very clear here. I believe that Islam is the true religion of God. Therefore, I accepted it. But nevertheless, he's absolutely right here. The base respect we have 
to give each other as humans, as brothers and sisters in humanity. There is absolutely no point in pointing the finger and screaming Kafir over and over again. No, we are brothers and sisters in humanity. I couldn't agree more. And this is why I personally truly see the world split in right and wrong, good and evil. And you have good people everywhere. Even here in Thailand, I'm living amongst Buddhists. You have no idea how many beautiful Buddhists I met. I had Muslim brothers with me here in Thailand and they said themselves, man, we can learn something of those Buddhists. They're so nice. They're so friendly. We as Muslims have to step up to that level. And I absolutely agree. We can never trade falsehood for truth. Absolutely not. We should always convey the true message of Islam, obviously. But we have to do it in a beautiful way, as he said. Otherwise, people are just shutting down. And for me personally, when people ask me, why don't you give dawah? Guys, I call this low-key undercover dawah, if you will. I do not speak directly to people and try to convince them, because nobody did that to me either. Ultimately, I opened up the Quran because I wanted to debunk Islam. And look where that brought me. If you have an open mind, you can understand the information that is being presented to you, but it cannot be forced upon you. There is no compulsion in religion. That's what it states in the Quran. And this is what I always have in the back of my mind. When talking to people, I simply say, yes, I'm a Muslim. And if they have questions, I talk about it. But ultimately, Allah guides who he wills. All right, guys. And this is it for today's video. Yet again, eat Mubarak. Everybody celebrate with your families for me a little bit. If you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via merch, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.